Hey, good morning, y'all. Good morning, good morning. My name is Joy Williamson. I'm um, 28 years old. I am a former uh, basketball athlete. I played uh, college basketball at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Coach Rich was actually uh, one of our strength and conditioning coaches. He's a beast, man. He's a monster. You already know that. And more than anything, man, he is a great person. Um, Coach Rich, he reached out. He reached out to me, and he just <clears throat> let me know about some great things that he was doing for the culture of his school, man. And it is it is amazing to see. It's an honor to be able to send this uh, little short message and clip to y'all, and just let y'all know how important it is to work hard, how important it is to sacrifice for what you really want to accomplish, and just some of the challenges that I face, the challenges that you're going to face, man. There's a lot you, the Right now, what you're going through, right now, the stages that y'all in, this is going to be some of the best times of y'all life. The, no matter what it looks like yesterday, what it may feel like today, um, whether you're not getting recruited how you want to be recruited, or maybe you're not getting the recognition that you feel like you should, or you're putting in the work but you're not seeing it on your playing field, whatever that may be, everything is all about a process. You have to truly fall in love with the process. See, most of us, I'm going to say us because I used to be like this, most of us are outcome driven. We don't focus on a process. We just want the outcome right then and right there. We want to be good now. We want to receive scholarships now. We want to have recognition now. We want to be the best right now. But nobody wants to go through the journey of everything that comes along with being the best in your sport. Having, being ranked. Winning a championship, winning a conference championship, getting recruited, getting a full ride scholarship offer. No one wants to go through those dark times because when you're going through those dark times, you're going to be lonely because everybody doesn't want to be great. Everybody doesn't even want to be really good. Some people are just doing it for fun to get through high school, um, whatever the case may be, and that's fine. But the ones that really, really want it, you have to be prepared to be alone. You have to be prepared to be in the gym by yourself. You have to be prepared to study by yourself. You have to be prepared to say, I'm not going out tonight. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go work on my craft. You have to be prepared to lose friends because believe it or not, some of your friends are holding you back from your full potential, but you're trying to bring everybody along with you. But for me, I'm a firm believer in God and Something that God has for you, he doesn't have for everybody else. So you have to elevate yourself and you have to separate yourself so you can truly receive the benefits that God truly has for you. For me growing up, I had a ton of friends. I had a ton of things I could be doing. But I know for me personally, there was nobody in my family that graduated high school. Not a male figure, excuse me, no male figure. My uncles. My dad passed away when I was six. My older brothers, nobody graduated from high school. That sounds crazy, right? So I had it in my mind that no matter what, not I'm going to graduate high school. And not only am I going to graduate high school, but I'm going to play Division I basketball. A full ride scholarship, not coming out of pocket for anything. My grandma who raised it, she told me, she said, son, the only way that you're going to be able to go to college is you're going to have to receive a scholarship because there's no way that we can afford it. That's all she had to say. That's all she had to say. I did whatever it took to make sure that I reached my goal. Whatever it took. Friends, I'm sorry, I gotta let y'all go because some of those people, they were doing drugs, they were being introduced to new things, they were selling drugs, they were staying out all night with girls, they were doing a lot of things that was a distraction. Some of them were having kids and I knew that I've seen my brothers go through situations like that, so I was going to make sure that I had nothing to do with that and stay as far away as possible so I can get to my goal, so I can fulfill the purpose that God has for me. So I'm going to just take it back to my senior year in high school. My senior year in high school, um, I was... I feel like I was really good. The people around me told me that I was really good, but despite how many people were telling me good, I wasn't getting letters. I wasn't getting scholarship offers. I was, it was hard to get coaches to come in and watch us play because we were a little average team. We didn't have no five-star recruits, whatever the case may be. So I was getting frustrated. I stopped trusting God to believe it or not, and that's not like me. I have a really strong belief 
in my faith that God is the creator of all. He is the most amazing thing to me personally and the things that he has brought me through. I have no other way but to live my life as a surrendered vessel to him. But during this time, I couldn't see what I wanted and like I couldn't see it happening for me. Everybody around me, schools, people that I grew up with, scholarship offers, coaches is coming in to watch them play. But nobody was coming to my school. Nobody was coming to um, watch me. And I killed those guys on the court that I, that's getting scholarship offers. But for some reason, everybody around me is getting the things that I want. And I'm sitting here feeling like I'm in this dark place. But I couldn't understand because I'm putting in work. I'm the best player on my team, I'm dominating on the floor. I'm averaging almost 22 points a game. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why things isn't going like this. Sometimes we have to go into a place of where nobody else is at. So I feel like God was sculpting me and molding me into the man that he wanted me to be outside of basketball before he could bless me so I can be the person that I wanted to be inside of basketball, if that makes sense. Because on the court, I was doing everything right, but I wasn't doing everything right in the classroom. I was still showing up late to class. I was still showing up late to school. I was minding my own business. I was doing just enough to get by. My older brother, he came in and he really had a heart to heart with me. He just told me, he's like, dude, what are you doing? He said, he told me, he said, I can tell by the way you're walking around. He said, you feel like you're the man, but he's like, what scholarship do you have to show for it? He said, have you received your dreams? Did you forget that you're the only one in our family that has graduated high school? Why are you walking around with your nose in the air like you're the man? Because you're not. And it humbled me down a lot. He said, just try to sacrifice the hardest things that you feel like that you need to sacrifice and watch how God is going to bless you. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm already in the gym five in the morning. I'm already staying late after school. I'm already running extra sprints. And he said, that's your problem. You're only focusing on one area that you think that you need to be focusing on. He said in life, he said the things that guy is trying to show you, he's trying to show you things for life and not just for basketball. And when he said that, it like smacked me in the face because I'm like, wow, that is very true. So I made a commitment after that conversation that I was gonna make sure that I was gonna show up to class every day on time. Not only was I gonna show up to class every day, but I was gonna to talk to my teacher, shake their hand or his hand, and I was gonna let them know that I was in class. I was gonna show more respect. I was gonna sit closer, because we could sit wherever we want, long as we were a good student. I was gonna sit closer to the board. I was gonna stay after class, and I was gonna ask for help, even if I didn't need help, just so they can see that I'm trying. No longer was I late to class. No longer was I showing up to school late. No longer was I leaving campus for lunch when we wasn't supposed to. So no longer was I doing those things. The little things like that started giving, making me feel a lot better. I'm still busting my butt. I'm still going hard. My coach asked me to be a leader earlier in the season. I said, okay, I'll be a leader in the back of my head. Only thing I'm about to lead this team to is get buckets. I was being selfish. The only thing I cared about was getting buckets, getting a full ride scholarship, so I'm back here leaving my team. If we lost the game, I didn't care as long as I had 30. That's how I felt. So I made a commitment that I'm going to lead my team. I said, if we take one day at a time, we had a players only meeting. I put it together. Coaches had no idea. I told them that I had failed them because I was being selfish and I was worried about me. I didn't care about winning the state championship. I didn't care about winning the conference championship. The only thing I cared about was getting a full scholarship for myself and leaving this school and going to do what I want to do. So I had a serious meeting with my team, and I showed some leadership, and I let them know that I was doing things the wrong way, and they were going to see a better Jobo. That's my nickname. I was going to see a better Jobo. So I committed to them as in working with anybody that I saw was having problems, pushing people, encouraging people. All year, my coach was saying, talk, talk, talk. I need you to encourage. I need you to, I need you to lead them with your words. You can already play, but I need you to lift people up. Don't yell at people whenever they mess up. He asked me to do these things, and I wasn't doing it. But now, once I, once I had this conversation with my brother, I said, okay, it's time for me to step into the true leader that God has called me to be. So I was that guy encouraging everybody, let's go. And it didn't happen overnight. It took a while. It was a lot of times where I had to go home and I couldn't believe what I was doing because I still wasn't getting the things that I wanted to do. But believe it or not, I stayed the course. I fell in love with the process. And eventually 
the leadership role from our team. It became second nature. I enjoyed it. We're having team outings together. We're in a weight room together. I'm showing people how to do new lifts. I'm doing the things that my coach has been asking for me to do for almost two years. So I start doing these things. And what do you know? It sounds crazy and it sounds cliche. After about four months, I'm doing all these things the right way. My first college letter come in, Wichita State Division I. It was crazy. I was like, okay, everybody get letters. A phone call came in from Wichita State. My coach called me to the office, and he just wanted to say that he was at the game that we had two Fridays ago, which I had a really good game, and he was interested <coughs> in having me come and visit his program. So, of course, I'm celebrating. I'm going crazy. Ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. can nobody tell me nothing. But immediately, I started thinking. I was just like, whenever you do things the right way, when you grind, when you trust the process, and you allow yourself to be, take your step back and put your team before you and push your team, and as well as you're performing, you're still grinding. I was still putting in my, my pro time, what I like to call it, my time where I could be the best version of myself on the court. But I was bringing everybody along, and I'm trying to tell you 10 is better than one, 15 is better than three. So when you work together as a team, as a unity, you can do anything. How, how important is it to have one gift versus having 10 gifts? Imagine all those gifts and all those talents come together because you can't battle alone. Nobody wants to be alone. Nobody wants to be lonely. Nobody wants to feel defeat. But in life, you're going to feel all of that, not just in sports, but in all of that. And that and that's a fact, and that's that's proven. You can't you can't run from adversity in life. You can't run from failures. You can't run from letdowns and people letting you down. But what you can do is you can respond. You can step up, show perseverance, and show your faith. More than anything, when I put my faith in God, I didn't put my faith in my teammates. I put my faith in God to say, God, if you allow me to be in position to lead right now, if you give me what I need, the tools, the words, the, the sportsmanship, if you give me the leadership to give them, I will give it. I want to be used by you. And this is a time where I was growing in my relationship with Christ as well. So this is an ongoing growth. We're never going to be a finished product, but we have to work every single day to be the best versions of ourselves. And when I took that selfishness out of me and start putting my arms on my brothers and letting them know that I love y'all, man, this is the man, this is the best time we're gonna have of high school together because the real world starts after that. And when we start doing things the right way, believe it or not, not only did I get scholarship offers, two more of my teammates got scholarships. And I couldn't even imagine them going to college. But just the whole fact that we de developed this bond, we were staying out in the gym two hours after practice, the janitors having to kick us out, telling us we got to go home. But we fell in love with each other so much and the passion and just playing one-on-one -on -one and going at it that we truly developed a bond that is inseparable. We're like inseparable even to today. So at the end of the day, I just want to let y'all know who's watching this, bring your brother, or if there's any girls watching, bring your sister along. If you're in a sport, there's no way you can be selfish. Selfishness is, is, a, is the fastest road to disaster. I'm trying to tell you right now. And you, if there's any leaders, the, all of us are leaders. And believe it or not, all of us are leaders. But in sports, sometimes there's only one leader, or sometimes there may be two leaders. And the craziest thing, the best leaders they don't really like to accept that role as a leader. I read this in a book and I've heard it multiple times. The best leaders sometimes don't want to accept their role as a leader. It has to be somebody that pushes them, encourages them. Tug, come on, come on, this is what you're supposed to be doing. If you're a leader, step up and lead by example. And the hardest thing about doing being a leader is you have to do things the right way at all the time. You have to bite the bullet sometimes. You have to take the blame sometimes. You have to sacrifice your ability so you can make other people around you better. And the people that's following, don't be so judgmental. If, you, if there's a good leader in front of you, follow their lead. Follow them, trust in them, trust your coaches. Coach Rich, any other coaching staff, y'all have to trust them. They know exactly what they're doing. And if you want the best things of, in life, whatever it is that you want, some of you might not want to play sports in college. Some of you might want to do something else. But whatever it is in life, you have to trust 
the process. You can't go straight to the outcome because you're going to miss all the learning lessons and all the tools that you get into that you're going to get on the way to that road. I'm 28 years old and I'm still in the process of trying to figure out and trying to learn more about my leadership. I'm a teacher now how I can serve my kids. How can I be a better leader for them? How can I be more patient for them? How can I deliver them a new message or a new way of teaching style that they've never seen before but that they receive more of? So whatever it is, whatever your talents, whatever your gifts are, I encourage you to continue to just seek the process and be the best version of yourself. All right. I love y'all. Thank y'all for letting me share this. I hope I wasn't rambling too much, but out of respect for Coach Rich, he's done amazing things for me. He gave me these. Look at these muscles. He gave me all of this. He gave me, he helped me with all of this. No, Rich, I love you, sir, man. And I'm truly, truly honored to be able to help serve your kids. And good luck to everybody and everything that you're doing this season. And just take it, take a moment, take a deep breath, and just like reflect on what you have done over this past year. If you have you wasted time? Well, let's get that time back. It's it's okay. And don't look to that, don't look into the final product. See, I'm I'm gonna use this. As, a, as an analogy for me, I love cookies. I love cinnamon rolls. I love sweets. I'm sorry, yeah, I said it. But sometimes I want them so bad that I take them out the oven before they're ready. So they're a little bit doughy. Anybody that knows that, that is the worst. But I'm so hungry and I'm so excited to get it, I take it out before they're ready. You have to make sure that you are a finished product. Just like the cinnamon rolls and cookies, take your time, let everything cook, allow your game to come through, allow your muscles to develop, allow your body to rest whenever it's time to rest. And I'm telling you, you're going to get all the things that you want. If you keep God first, you trust your coaching staffs, and you fall in love with what you're truly doing with your team, y'all are going to go everywhere that y'all want to do, and God is going to open up so many doors for y'all. I'm a firm believer, and I'm a witness because he's done it for me, and he'll do it for y'all. I love y'all, and I hope everybody has a great rest of the year. All right, this is Joy Williamson, and y'all enjoy y'all day. Love y'all. I don't even know y'all, but I send that love all the time. Thanks, Coach.